wishing star. Young princesses have received a magical wand, and young knights have received a magical sword. Okay, get him. Get your sword, right? So wave your wands and sword. Yes, thank you. the optimism and goodwill he saw at the heart of the American story. Walt's vision was to honor the nation by honoring the American presidency. It is 1783. And the smoke is clearing in the wake of the Revolutionary War. Over the course of eight grinding years, General George Washington has led a force of shopkeepers, farmers, and Native American allies to victory over the greatest military power in the world. A new nation has been born, independent and free. The founders must form a national government in 1787, through months of passionate debate, they create a written constitution. For the country's highest office, they imagine something new in the history of the world. A leader not born to power like a king or queen. A leader who has not seized power through conquest. A leader not separate from the people, but elected by the people, from among the people. We, the people. This is a new idea, an American idea. The idea of a president. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought
brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here, have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note, nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and the government of the people by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, the presidents of the United States of America. George Washington. John Adams. Thomas Jefferson. James Madison, James Monroe, James K. Polk, Zachary Taylor, Millard Fillmore, Franklin Pierce, James Buchanan, Abraham Lincoln, Benjamin Harrison, William McKinley, Theodore Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, Woodrow Wilson, Dwight D. Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Ronald Reagan, George Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and now we come to the present. Once again, we place our trust in the idea of a president, as we have from the beginning. My fellow citizens. No event could have filled me with greater anxieties than that notification on the 14th day of April, 1789, that you had selected me to lead our nation. But it was with the confidence of my fellow citizens that I took an oath. 35 simple words that have been repeated by every American president throughout history. I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. From the beginning, America has been a nation defined by its people. At our founding, it was the American people who rose up to defend our freedoms and win our independence. 
It is why our founders began our great constitution with three very simple words. We the people. Since that moment, each generation of Americans has taken its place in the defense of our freedom, our flag, and our nation under God. These are the achievements of the American spirit, the spirit of a people who fought and died to bring the blessings of liberty to all our people. Above all, to be American is to be an optimist, to believe that we can always do better and that the best days of our great nation are still ahead of us. It's a privilege to serve as the President of the United States, to stand here among so many great leaders of our past, and to work on behalf of the American people. The Presidency of the United States is a role unique in the world, an office entrusted to each president by us, we the people. Therein lies the genius of that new idea, now over 200 years old. A new idea our presidents have turned into a great American idea again and again.